Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment, for the Sony Xperia Pro-I. This phone launched at the end of 2021 with a retail price of $1799. In fact, that's the same price as my daily driver, the Z Fold 3. But unlike Samsung, Sony is not trying to reinvent or reimagine the smartphone experience, but rather perfect it. So what do you get at that $1799 price point? Well, first and foremost, uh, the main camera on this device is based around Sony's one-inch sensor that you'd find in the ZV-1 or the RX100. They're essentially top-of-the-line point-and-shoot cameras that no one in the industry beats. It only utilizes 12 of the 20 megapixels. I'll get to more on that later. It's essentially just because that lens that you see here, which is much larger than the 16mm ultra-wide or 50mm telephoto 12 megapixel shooters, the lens would have had to have been gigantic. It would have essentially created imbalance on the device. So uh, this is the first run by Sony at throwing that one-inch sensor in there. Uh, you have real-time tracking with it. You can shoot up to 20 frames per second, eye autofocus, uh, 4K 120 frames. So really, this is for photo enthusiasts. But don't get me wrong, I said the best of everything. You have a 6.5-inch 4K OLED with a 120 hertz refresh rate that you'll see soon. You also have a Snapdragon 888 processor running the show, 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of internal storage that is expandable uh, using a micro SD card, stereo speakers. There's another camera, a selfie camera, 8 megapixels. That's probably the only thing not worth writing home about. Uh, no wireless charging here, but you still have the ability uh, to charge this at a pretty fast rate. I mean, faster than my Z Fold 3, so that is a good thing. Uh, Victus Gorilla Glass on that 6.5 inch 21 by 9. Again, very color accurate display and really best in class everything. So Android 11, fairly stock. Sony not trying to uh, really overlay to death. That's something that you know they were known for years ago and then they pretty much walked back. And it amounts to good things. So what you've been looking at this whole time is the Vlogger Bundle. Now, the Vlogger Bundle, I think, with the phone will set you back a little over $2,000. It does not include this microphone uh, lav system that you can see right here that I just reviewed recently, which is a nice addition, I would say, to this setup. But you could use any microphone you want. And what the Bluetooth, or excuse me, the Vlogger Bundle includes is the Bluetooth grip, which I already own. Uh, but this is a review unit going back to Sony. Uh, and then an arm, or a mount, I should say, that allows you to throw on the included 3.5-inch uh, field monitor, which is magnetic. This does just come off. And then it also has a mounting point, a hot shoe, up there for your mic. So if you want to use a shotgun mic, you can. And for those of you that were wondering why you were looking at this, well, that is why. Because this is one of the things that makes this really unique. And the reason you would vlog with this orientation is because you want to utilize that one inch sensor. Uh, not just because the eight megapixel selfie camera is the weak point of all the cameras on this phone, but because the one inch sensor with that 24 mil variable aperture lens is the star of the show, besides all the best in class hardware. Now, you've looked at my face long enough, even though I know you couldn't see it incredibly well, let's get on to the actual device camera performance, and whether or not I think it's worth the price. But before I do that, there's also a microphone right there, uh, which I have to say the audio on is exceptional. Uh, so in the event you don't want to use a mic, shotgun mic, or lav, don't worry about it. The audio captured here is really good. So let's go ahead and tear this thing down. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this first. I'm also going to show you something. Uh, now, if you didn't notice, this is connected to the camera, of course, and that's because uh, it is powered by the camera. So as you can see right here, we have power and input on this as well as an audio input. Uh, just be aware that you know this is going to take down that 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is a really good capacity battery, and you can get through a day, but if you're going to use it in the fashion I've been showing you here at the beginning of this video, it's going to drain that battery very quickly. And that's why Sony has given you a power port as well. So if you want to incorporate a battery bank into this setup, you can. On the other side, uh, you have your on-off switch as well as the ability to flip the display's orientation and a brightness button. And there's even a mounting point here on the back of the display. And, you know, this is a great package. I do wonder what Sony will do in the next revision of it. 
but that's always something I wonder about every great product, so no surprise here. And by the way, this is not a perfect device. No device is, so that shouldn't surprise anyone, but it's still really, really good. So let me go ahead, take off the microphone, and get rid of the Bluetooth grip, which of course, by the way, I didn't mention, gives you the ability to shoot stills, video, uh, zoom, and have customizable buttons. Uh, you know, that's just something that I guess could be self-explanatory, but for any of you that are wondering, I didn't want you to, to be too curious about the capability. And let's get rid of that and let's talk about this device. So, as I've mentioned, candy bar style, uh, beautiful 4K OLED display, and one of the things that I think is really amazing about this, and I've always personally been waiting for Sony to do this because I remember Panasonic was the first company to incorporate a one-inch sensor into a smartphone. I think it was in the late or mid-2000s. I don't remember if it was 2005 or 2006. Could have been 2008. I don't remember off the top. It flopped. And that was just because it was too expensive, although it was less expensive than this device. Uh, people just didn't know what to think of it. And you have to remember, for most people out there, the smartphone has replaced uh, their point-and-shoot camera. So it's about time that we got a smartphone that actually has the capability of the best uh, point-and-shoot cameras on the planet. And for the majority of users, as I stated, this, in general, phones have replaced point-and-shoot cameras. But for people like me, and for many of you that subscribe to my channel, you've been waiting for a phone that performs like an RX100 or ZV-1 because that is the only way it could replace your point-and-shoot camera. And this is incredibly close to doing it. I mean, the still quality is excellent. Uh, color science on here, another benefit of Sony, you know, improving upon color science and then bringing it here. Uh, their apps are unrivaled. I mean, pretty much every manufacturer has copied their quote-unquote pro experience apps. You can see Video Pro actually was just introduced uh, with this phone. Uh, another thing I really like about this device is that there's no notch, there's no cutout, we have six and a half inches of full display. I mean, the eight megapixel selfie camera, as I mentioned, not that good, but it doesn't cut into the display integrity. So you've got to appreciate that. Now, when you take a look around the body of the device, which I think is really nicely designed and feels substantial, uh, on the left side, we have our SIM tray, which is also where you're going to uh, pop in your micro SD card, and it is tool free. This is another thing to love about this. You have no necessity to have a SIM uh, key to pop in there, so easy access. You've got to dig that. I mean, I do. Uh, then uh, a lanyard loophole there, because after all, this is a, a camera, is it not, besides being a smartphone. Bottom, we have our Type-C port, as well as a microphone right there. And then along the top of the device, you still have what has gone away from most, a three and a half millimeter audio jack. Uh, in addition to that, another microphone. Uh, on the other side, this is pretty much where all the action is. The right side of the device, we have our volume rocker, power button that also doubles as a fingerprint scanner, and then we have a shutter button. A half press will uh, actuate focus, full press takes the image. Remember, 20 frames per second on this with actually accurate uh, autofocusing, now that Sony's the king of the hill in that realm. And then we have a button that is dedicated for video. This will launch the Video Pro app uh, that I mentioned is brand new uh, to Sony and launched with this device. So you have a button dedicated to taking you into video and a button dedicated to taking you into still. And then on the back, of course, as I already showed you, uh, we have three cameras, the center one being the star uh, with that Zeiss uh, lens that, you know, a 24 mil variable aperture uh, that really just outperforms much of the competition. 4K at 120 frames uh, is just unheard of on a smartphone. In fact, it's fairly unheard of on most of Sony's cameras unless you're shooting with something like my FX3 that I'm recording this on or the A7S3 or, of course, their A1. But all of that aside, great camera performance out of that. Now, the 12 megapixels, as I mentioned, had they gone with a lens that would have utilized the entire sensor, the lens assembly would have been much larger to the point that I think it would have been an eyesore. And I think Sony's fear there is, of course, this still has to be aesthetically pleasing. And I think they really did accomplish that. Um, we've got some time of flight uh, sensors for autofocus with uh, the other uh, two lenses, as you may have noticed. 
And uh, as I mentioned before, that microphone, we've also got an NFC contact point, no wireless charging. I really like this soft touch uh, finish on the back, really means no fingerprints. More manufacturers should get on board with this. It looks great. It doesn't start to look terrible over time uh, from being touched. So those are good things. I mentioned the 4,500 milliamp hour battery is great for general use, but once you really turn this into an RX100, that's where things slowly fall apart. Now, in my own experience, uh, the beauty of this device is that for someone like me, for travel, I would instantly pick one of these up. In fact, this is the only phone that would pull me away from my good old Z Fold 3. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the Z Fold 3, the most dynamic phone experience on the market. But if you don't care about having a tablet in your pocket that folds up to a candy bar, this is the phone to have, in my opinion. Um, now, personally, I'm still going to be waiting to see what Sony does next round with this. This is their first foray into the one inch being embedded into a candy bar. And I think it's a really good offering. And I don't think anyone that picks this up is going to be disappointed. The one thing I will say about it is that when you shoot stills with this in auto mode, the basic mode, they can be underwhelming when compared to the computational um, advances made by competing products. And that's sad because this absolutely has the better sensor lens combo. So I feel like Sony still has some more work to do on the auto side of things. Uh, but if you're willing to jump into settings, play with aperture, shutter speed, uh, really go manual, you're going to love this thing. It's going to perform just like, again, a RX100. And the performance is really, really close in spite of not using all 20 megapixels. You really do have to think of it, again, like the A7R4 that I have in the background there. You know, one of the things I love about it is with that 60 megapixel sensor, when you throw on an APS-C lens, it does get cut in half. You know, you end up with uh, 20 some odd megapixels that's usable from the center of the sensor, but you have all of the advantages of the A7R4 sensor inherently and the autofocus system that the body has. Well, the same thing applies here. Even though you're only using 12 of the 20 megapixels, you end up with all the advantages. Uh, so shallow depth of field, there's a bokeh mode in here for those of you that are wondering, uh, dynamic range, all of the properties, even the fact that the megapixels are literally larger, the surface area, surface area, excuse me, as opposed to traditional smartphone sensors, which Sony's the biggest maker of in the world, uh, you just have inherent advantages. So um, one thing I want to start off by showing is I'll jump into, you know, their camera app. And again, you can see instantly you have a lot of capability when it comes to settings. Um, no lack whatsoever. You want to change your mode, easily can do that. And this is going to be very familiar for people that are Sony users, for other people, not so much. Now, the basic mode is what I'm talking about. When you're in the basic mode, which pretty much looks like stock Android, um, and that's because this pretty much is a stock Android phone, that's where images can be a little underwhelming, as I stated, but colors are still really natural. I don't think that they look bad. It's just that, for example, shooting at night, other manufacturers, Samsung, Apple, Google, will outperform this device. But if you get manual, this device will outperform the rest. But I do think that that is a concession that cannot be made at this point. At $1,799, Sony has to have a device that nails it every time. It can't be only if you're willing to go into settings. So just something to be aware of, but you see all the different modes that it offers. Uh, and then of course, the actual uh, capability. So uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, they've done this before, but not with a one inch sensor. If I go ahead and uh, jump back, of course, we also have the Cinema Pro. And by the way, warnings will come up about overheating. I have not experienced any, but remember, this is a one inch sensor, uh, just like the RX100, ZV1, those cameras experience overheating. So it's not a shock that you could experience it here as well. Now, the Cinema Pro mode essentially gives you the look and feel of working with a Venice camera from Sony. So you've got a project. I mean, you can customize every single thing to your heart's content right now. You can see I've got uh, 4K 120, but you know, if you want to scale that down to 2K, you can. If you want to get rid of the 120 and go to something uh, a little bit more usual, like 24 frames, you can do that. I personally like to shoot at 30, uh, but you can go to 60 as well. So it's really up to you what you want to do. Uh, and then obviously, 
you know, when you get into this area, that's where you start to be reminded that you're in the Pro app. Uh, what is cool, though, is when you're recording, um, it does essentially act like a tally light. Um, also, I didn't mention, we do have an LED indicator, uh, you know, notifications. I love that. I miss it. I wish we still had it. But, you know, most devices have done away with it. Sony retained it. I think that's another brilliant move, just appealing to rationale. I mean, why get rid of that? I mean, I know why they got rid of it. It was to make screens bigger, and uh, I think that it, they can still coexist. Let's just put it that way. Let me jump out of this. Uh, there are a lot of advantages to using those uh, the, the Pro modes, but this is the new one that Sony uh, added for Video Pro rather than Cinema. You can launch it with the button right there next to the shutter button, um, and this gives you the ability to zoom in, zoom out, uh, and of course, gives you access to the majority of, uh, again, the controls that you'd want to use. You can still uh, jump in. You can see the little camera button there. Uh, of course, record, uh, your focus switch. You can jump into the menu. I mean, this really, again, gives you a lot of flexibility. You can see you can go with AVC or, or HEVC. Um, but, you know, be sure that you have a system that can deal with that file format. It is uh, definitely more strenuous. Uh, here I have... A video. So this is just a simple test of the Sony Xperia Pro I. I just wanted to see what the quality was like. Microphone, of course, video. I'm here in the studio. Just check. Make sure volume's all the way up. Wanted to make sure that audio captures nice and cleanly. I mean, realistically, you got to still hold it fairly far away, which isn't that big of a deal, but certainly I think gives you a little bit of a. So I'm going to stop it there because that is an issue. Um, one of the things that you will experience with this device is that when using the Vlogger bundle, that 24 mil lens still makes it so that you have to fully extend your arm, which is similar to using the ZV-1 or an RX-100 for vlogging, unfortunately. So that's just something I wanted to point out. But that audio that you heard, which hopefully reproduces well over my studio mic, that was all captured from that microphone. And that I shot today, that is that was just a demo for this review. It is great. I mean, I've used it on several occasions. It's impressed. And that's one of the reasons that I don't feel you need to have any sort of dedicated uh, microphone. But obviously, depending on the project you're shooting with it, you can. Now, for me, traveling, knowing that I could potentially no longer have to carry a ZV-1 or RX-100 is what makes this phone uh, lustworthy. Because as I, as I said earlier in the video, I've been waiting for something like this for a very long time. And for anyone who was already traveling with full frame or even APS-C mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras, the you know point and shoot stuff is only uh, something you can truly get rid of once you can carry it in your pocket. And this does represent a step in that direction. Uh, now, for a traditional user, their phone, as I stated earlier, has already replaced point and shoot. So this may not be something they feel they need, especially since it does require, in many instances, some intervention rather than living in an auto mode. Although it does do well in auto. I don't want anyone to think you can't shoot in auto. You can. It does fairly well. It's just you'll do the best you can actually manipulating uh, settings like you would on a traditional camera. But for general users, uh, I feel like they're likely to already... If they're going to have a camera, they will have the point and shoot. Uh, but for enthusiasts, hobbyists, pros alike that are already lugging around a gear bag, if they can eliminate having an RX100 or ZV-1 by having this phone, I know how appealing it is to me. And it's almost an instant buy. So Sony is on to you know, the right track, uh, in my opinion, no question about it. They just need to continue to work on this a little bit more. And I say that only because... They are oh so close, but I want to give you an example um, here of an image I took of Barks. That's Barkley, uh, our lab. And, you know, the colors look good, natural, um, and as does, I would say, the, the auto autofocus locked, but I mean, he wasn't really moving too much. As we get in close, you know, things do start to get a little smudge-tastic, but that is par for the course with this one-inch sensor. I mean, you go in 100% crop, it's going to happen. But I feel like the, you know, the image speaks for itself. It's still a good shot. What I'm going to show you side by side, though, is essentially the same image that I shot on my Z Fold 3. And while I could, you know, focus on comparing these two devices, they aren't really comparable. I mean, you've got one that aims to replace your camera, 
and just be the best phone on the market, and the other aims to replace your tablet. And the Z Fold 3 does do that. Let me get rid of some of these notifications. They're piling up while filming. Not anything surprising here. Uh, we'll come back to it now. So, as you can see, Bark's there. The images look really different. I mean, and these are shot on, on auto I, for a very deliberate reason. I want everyone to be able to see what these cameras are going to perform like without human intervention. So if you did this at home, you're getting the same results I'm demonstrating for you here. And what you can see really clearly is how different the color of the wood flooring looks and Barclay for that matter. You know, I feel like the Sony does a better job overall than the Samsung, but it's low light shooting where the Sony does not. And that's where you would have to take over to really get it, in my opinion, to shoot to the same level as the, the Z Fold 3. Now, bear in mind, when you're utilizing uh, the 12 megapixels as opposed to the 20 on the one inch sensor on the Sony, it is approximately gonna be the same size of sensor area that is in Samsung's latest S22. So that gives you an idea on the actual size. But of course, the Sony should still easily outperform it because of the sensor quality that I've mentioned before. You know, dynamic range, depth of field, larger megapixels, those are all advantages to the Sony. Of course, I don't have that here with the Z Fold 3, but just something I wanted to mention. And then if I zoom in on Barks, you can see the Z Fold 3 does, you know, pretty well. See if I can, oh, I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to one-hand it with the candy bar there. Let me go ahead and just bring it back up uh, so you can see it. But that's another one of those things where, you know, you need it as a reference point to really see. So let me go in to a similar crop here. Similar. Doesn't seem like it because I've got, you know, the Z Fold 3 um, opened up and it's a completely different resolution as well, but similar. And I have to say, both are really good, but again, if you want something that's going to, I mean, things look pretty blown out, as you may have noticed with the Samsung, um, whereas they remain fairly natural looking. And that's not the brightness in the device either. That's just things getting crushed. I mean, I can lower brightness. Let's do that right now. Take it down. We'll see how much of a difference that makes because the, the Sony's at about 50%. I mean, that made a difference, but I can tell you Barclay's natural uh, colors on his coat definitely seem to be more accurate on the Xperia Pro I than my Z Fold 3. So again, just food for thought. You know, it's something where I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this device. Uh, some people may buy it saying, well, it's got, a, you know, an RX100 built into it, so it's going to be amazing. With the right end user, absolutely, I agree. Um, when it comes to using this for everything else, you know, I tested it with Verizon, which where I live is the best network. It's kind of the best network everywhere for the most part. Performance was flawless. I do not have 5G uh, in my market, but everything worked well. The speakerphone, the fact that you have stereo speakers is another really nice touch uh, that makes this phone outperform a lot of other devices. Uh, great for consuming content. The fact that you have a 21 by nine aspect ratio uh, so that, you know, if there's no letterboxing on uh, cinematic content. That's part of the reason that when you utilize the Cinema Pro mode on this, you really do have that experience. Again, very much stock. It does have some of Sony's bloat, but you know, the PlayStation app, it's not too egregious. Uh, Xperia transfer, these are things that I do not think are a big deal at all. The game enhancer, but remember, you've got pretty much the best processor on the market, more than enough RAM at 12 gigs. It competes with all flagships. And that half terabyte of internal storage clearly tailored to someone who's going to be using this smartphone as their daily driver when it comes to uh, it being a camera and just a content consumption and storage device. And the fact that you can expand it, throw another half or full terabyte uh, micro SD card in there, they've become more affordable than ever. This really does permit like sky is the limit type uh, capability. So again, if I didn't own the Z Fold 3, this would definitely be on the short list because I mean, how else do you incorporate an RX100 into uh, a phone? It needs to be Sony. I mean, yes, other manufacturers are trying to do it. Leica's out there trying to rock it. But really, to me, Sony's the company that needed to do it. And 
uh, this is a very good step forward. I mean, for a first-gen model, granted, they've really upped their game across the entire Xperia lineup of phones. This is, as a first-gen, to me, easy to recommend, but it's not for everyone. You know, it, it just isn't because you really have to essentially uh, value that one-inch sensor, not in an irrational way, but in a way where you fit into, I feel like, the sort of consumer I am, that you know you're not going to have to carry an RX100 or ZV1 anymore, and that's worth it to you. Now, for me personally, I still would pick the Z Fold 3 at present, especially uh, with the pen input that I now have and water resistance. These are on even keel more than ever. Of course, the cameras are not in the same realm. Uh, the capabilities uh, not that close at all, but uh, in uh, where things are at right now, I still am far too happy and accustomed to having the larger display, you know, the nearly 8-inch display on the interior of the Z Fold 3. Now, when the second generation of this phone launches and the camera performance improves even more, it's going to be harder, and hopefully they introduce wireless charging as well. That, to me, is something that... I'm not saying it prevents me from wanting one of these, but it is a step back that I cannot justify. Anyone who follows my channel knows I will not support abandoning uh, Qi charging. It's something that I started using back when we had, you know, replaceable back plates in order to utilize them on Moto and HTC phones, you know, at the beginning of smartphone time, essentially. Uh, you know, who remembers all of those classic hits? Uh, but... The whole point is, is that they've gotten so much right with this, it's easy for me to recommend. Now, whether or not it's worth the $1,800, I get where the pricing comes from. I mean, you're talking about a $750 camera with the ZV-1, or even more with the much more premium RX100 line, where you're going to go over 1000 for the Mark 7, which utilizes the exact same sensor and logic board. So you're talking about in many ways, of value if they can get to the point that they utilize the entire sensor. I think until then, many critics uh, are going to continue to say this is in some ways false advertising because it's not really utilizing the full one-inch sensor and therefore it isn't worth uh, the money and it doesn't really replace the ZV-1, even at $750. But again, the performance of the still in video on this is so close to being like uh, what you'll get out of a ZV-1 or RX-100 that we're just that close to getting me on board. So once Sony gets there, and I wouldn't really care if this lens got absurdly larger, if the quality's there, because this is still, look at how much smaller this is than my Z Fold 3. I mean, they do not compare, right? So clearly, I am willing to take on a thicker device. I get Sony's trying to keep it one way, but if they choose to do so, they've got me. It's that easy. Um, and then, you know, having the, the pro apps is just, like I said, Sony kind of started it and everyone was like, we got to do this too. You know, Samsung, Apple, they all jumped on board to try to perfect that. Sony being the master of uh, DI in 2022, and they have been for several years now, and also being the master of sensors when it comes to the world's smartphones, since they're in the majority, they really have you know, the world at their fingertips when it comes to making this product better. So I have high hopes for second gen. I can easily recommend this now. If you're okay with being a gen one adopter, it's not buggy. You're not going to experience a lot of problems. It's not perfect. The electronic stabilization uh, for video is fine. Um, it's not amazing, but it's fine. You know, is there some rolling shutter going on with this? Will you get a little bit of a jello effect? Yeah. Remember, it's an RX100 inside of a smartphone. But overall, I think uh, that this is still unrivaled right now. I think we will see more competing products, and that's why Sony's got to get on that horse and just fully commit. This, as a Gen 1 product, is amazing. I think the Vlogger Bundle has a ways to go. I mean, I think they should come out with their own grip rather than this grip, which really was designed for other cameras. I mean, it was a novel idea, but if anything, if Sony really wanted to make this attractive, I think they could have probably priced this into that $1,800 uh, $1, price point. Uh, at least, you know, the grip and the mount. Maybe if they want to sell the display separately, I get it. But um, I think they need a custom handle uh, that really makes it so this thing is totally uh, wireless. You know, there's got to be a way. Sony, I'm sure you know how you could make this display wireless. Uh, and also, maybe we throw power uh, battery pack uh, inside of the actual 
uh, grip, make it chargeable over type C so that, you know, it continues to top off the phone and power uh, the display at the same time. There's just, there's room for improvement there. Just like there's a little bit of room for improvement with the device. But overall, again, great performance. Easy for me to recommend if the price tag doesn't make you choke. If it does, give it a generation. This thing will go down in price. Um, it'll still be really compelling. And Sony is, in my opinion, one of the last uh, great phone manufacturers that's really just starting to get their feet wet again, which is a great thing because, boy, do we live in a market of everything is kind of the same except for folding devices. So great to see something else that's not the same uh, and still essentially offers a different experience, even if it is in the same form factor. Great display, great cameras. Again, that selfie shooter, not great. Uh, but otherwise, all the other cameras are excellent. And I mean, I cannot stress enough the eye autofocus, real-time tracking, color science. Sony is on the right path. So I really like this phone, but I still like my folding phone a little bit more. So Sony's going to have to do just a little bit more. I, I did this before. That's how much they've got to do to get me to drop Samsung since I'm already spending $1,800 and I spent 2000 on the previous gen fold so they can get me and they're not trying to get the world on board with this just the same people I feel like that are willing to bite off that nearly $2,000 price tag with folding devices so they can get me I would love to not have to carry an RX100 and by the way the perfect situation or example for that is like you know when I'm traveling granted not through the pandemic when I go out to dinner I don't want to carry an RX100 or ZV1 if I can put this in my pocket. I mean, part of the thing that people have always talked about is, is the RX100 or ZV1 actually pocketable? And the answer is really no. I mean, you could fit it in a pocket, but it's not going to be comfortable. This, on the other hand, it's going to fit, and it's going to fit a lot better than my Z Fold 3. Now it's just a matter of getting this a little bit closer to perfection, which it's there. I mean, come on, the fact that you can use this phone on Verizon is already a huge win. But that rounds it out. I know I didn't uh, show a lot with software and browsing the web. That all works perfectly. I think the main emphasis here is battery life and camera performance. And the good news is those things work well. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.